Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of his Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may have, be, live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, hello and welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace where all are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and to serve others. Welcome to everyone joining us with our online worship experience. We understand people are still kind of feeling out whether or not they're ready to come back to in-person worship. So we just want to give you sort of an update on our worship offerings in the coming weeks. We will continue to worship in the outdoor chapel across the parking lot uh, at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings through May 9th, which is Mother's Day. And beginning on May 16th, we're going to be moving indoors for that same 11 o'clock Sunday morning worship service. Additionally, we are going to continue offering this online worship experience to premiere on Saturday nights for anyone who wants to keep worshiping at home. Uh, more info about all of our worship experiences and our services, like times and reservations, can be found on our website, aplc.org. We have a couple of events coming up. On Sunday, April 25th, join us for worship in the outdoor chapel at 11 o'clock to be led by our worship band and stay afterwards for our annual spring picnic. We're going to be serving hot dogs and chips. There's going to be music and games for everyone. I hope you'll consider joining us. It should be a really great time. And also, we have a blood drive coming up on Sunday, May 2nd, from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. We so appreciate everyone who has donated um, this life-giving resource to help support our health care systems. If you're interested in donating, please make an appointment ahead of time on our website, aplc.org. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of God's word. Amen. 
A reading from Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, <clears throat> why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or pity, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Exalt you, O oh my Lord. I will exalt you, O oh my Lord. You have lifted me up, you have saved me. I will exalt you. A reading from 1 John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, 
we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, hi, friends. How are you? I have something to show you today, and I'm guessing you've seen one of these before. Have you seen one of these around before? Do you know what this is called? That's right. It's a caterpillar. Yeah, and, and caterpillars do something kind of cool, something kind of unusual. They change or transform. They don't just stay like a caterpillar. They turn into this, which is called a pupa, and a pupa has like this cocoon that's wrapped all around it. But you know what? Pupa don't stay the same either. They change too. They transform into one of these, a butterfly. And you know what's kind of cool? Is that because of Jesus, we're kind of like these caterpillars. Because just like Jesus rose from the dead and transformed after he rose from the dead, we can transform too, just like these caterpillars transform into butterflies. Like this. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, because of what you've done and rose, risen from the dead and transformed, now we can transform too, just like these caterpillars transform into butterflies. In your name we pray. Amen. And now let's rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, o Christ. I'd like to open today's sermon by confessing that I have been slightly obsessed with the caterpillar infestation in San Antonio the last couple of weeks. The very first of these I encountered was on a walk one evening a couple weeks ago, just 
hanging down over the sidewalk right at about eye level, twisting furiously around its body like it was trying to hula hoop or something. And what seemed like the very next day, these caterpillars were everywhere, hanging from trees, dangling out in front of you, just waiting to grab onto your hair or your shirt and start, you know, inching along to who knows where. There seemed to be fewer and fewer of these caterpillars every day, but if you joined us for in-person on Easter Sunday in the outdoor chapel, you likely encountered some of these caterpillars who decided to join us for in-person worship as well. I recently learned, after a little bit of research, that there's actually several different types of caterpillars out there right now with names that are pretty fun to say, like canker worms, oak leaf rollers, loopers, and tent caterpillars. As they've started to disappear this week, I have been wondering, what's next for these determined, energetic little caterpillars? Where are they going? The little research I learned that many of these caterpillars will eventually crawl underground and transition to their pupa phase, and they're going to wrap themselves up safely in a little cocoon as they await their coming transformation in the next couple of months into moths, of all things. Many of us have spent the past year in a bit of a cocoon to varying degrees. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a lot of us to kind of build our own little cocoon of sorts. Maybe some of you call it your bubble. Um, classrooms, offices, and gyms have moved into kitchens and dining rooms and bedrooms. Gatherings with family and friends might have been delayed. The normal pattern of our lives has been disrupted. And now, with vaccinations increasing by the day, it's beginning to feel, to me at least, like we're approaching that point of starting to consider exiting the cocoon. Plans can be made with a little bit more confidence. Our bubbles are beginning to expand. And yet I understand that for many, this is a time of mixed emotions. There's like this desire to leave our cocoons and yet a trepidation about what doing so might mean of the risks that still exist, of anticipation along with anxiety, the gas pedal along with the brake pedal. Maybe like the disciples in our story today, some of us are feeling frightened with doubts arising in our hearts, joy, mixed together with disbelief and wonder. Our story today is from Luke's gospel, as opposed to John's gospel, where we have been in the past couple weeks. Um, so here we hear a different, slightly different account of Jesus' appearance to the disciples. Here in Luke, we find the disciples in a bit of a cocoon. After wandering excitedly around the Judean countryside, following this teacher who forgave sins, healed the sick, fed the hungry, this energetic young movement had just experienced this trauma of Jesus' execution and burial. Since that time, several of the disciples have visited the tomb, finding it empty and encountering angels there who tell them that Jesus is risen. They run back to find the other disciples, and also, since that time, two of the disciples that had left earlier in the day unexpectedly returned late in the evening, convinced that they had met Jesus on the road to Emmaus that he had broken bread with them, and now, um, now it seems that he's been back. And what could this all mean? Maybe out of fear for what this violence that had taken place towards their leader, their Messiah, might mean for their community, or maybe even because of the rumors that he'd risen again, this community has gathered together, underground, not literally, but figuratively cocooned together, maybe asking themselves, what is next for us? Where are we going from here? Into this tightly wound and anxious group of disciples gathered together in Jerusalem enters the risen Jesus Christ. His greeting, peace be with you, seems to have the opposite effect. Startling and terrifying the disciples who think they're seeing a ghost what Jesus does next is strikingly similar to this technique called grounding. It's like a mindfulness technique that I learned about in Army Resilience Training, where you bring yourself back into the present moment and time. 
when you're experiencing distressing or disturbing thoughts by identifying concrete things around you that you can see or feel, smell or touch. Jesus tells the disciples, look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And finally, have you anything here to eat? Jesus invites the disciples into the present moment. He uses his own body to bring them back into their physical surroundings. They had been running back and forth from the tomb, traveling back and forth from the village of Emmaus. Jesus arrives and tells them, Peace be with you, and in a very tangible way, invites them to join him in the present moment, to be with him in the flesh, in his resurrected body, with hands and feet and scars, with flesh and bones and mouth and stomach. Are we present right now with the body of the risen Christ? Maybe we too could take a moment in the midst of whatever fear and doubt or anxiety we have today to just look at our hands and feet. To feel ourselves fully in our own bodies with flesh and bones. Feel your stomach with your breakfast and maybe your coffee happily digesting inside. After inviting the disciples to be fully present with him in his resurrected, fleshly body. Jesus launches into what could be considered the world's greatest I told you speech of all time. <laughs> After all, he repeatedly told the disciples throughout his ministry that he would suffer, be killed, and rise from the dead. And now here he reiterates this very point. Jesus has been a reliable prophet. He was faithful to his word. He has risen Alleluia. And now, to his gathered, frightened group of followers, cocooned together, wondering what is next for them and where are they going from here, Jesus offers a glimpse of what's to come. That they will proclaim this good news of repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name to all nations. And furthermore, alluding to the coming Pentecost event in the book of Acts, Jesus tells them to stay put here in the city that they will be clothed with power from on high, just as the Father has promised. This is a promise that we receive today, too, even in the midst of life's cocoon times. And we all know that even without global pandemics, life is full of cocoon times, times where we are immobilized or stuck, frightened with doubts arising in our hearts, these cocoon times might exist physically or geographically. They might exist spiritually or emotionally. But there are these times when we ask ourselves, what is next? Where are we going from here? How long do we wait in this bubble or avoid crowds or work from home or stay put here in Jerusalem? I find it comforting how Jesus makes himself present with the disciples right in the midst of this time of hunkering down, a time of fear and anticipation, Jesus invites them to be fully present with him, not just spiritually, but present with his resurrected flesh and bones body. Jesus is hungry and asks, do you all have any food here? Jesus reminds them of his faithfulness, of how he has been faithful to his promise of suffering, death, and resurrection. He has fully accomplished the transformation. He reminds them that God will clothe them with power from the task ahead as they embark on God's mission in the world. And finally, Jesus asks them to stay put here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The Spirit is coming. Stay here. Be present. Here in this city, in this time of waiting and regrouping, God is faithful. Transformation is coming. Christ is with us. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear and answer in steadfast love. Loving Lord, may we, the church, embody the love that you show us through acts of kindness and generosity as we care for each other, the community, and the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. Giver of peace, enlighten and transform the leaders of all nations so they recognize injustice and the suffering of the righteous. Give them courage to work fearlessly to establish peace and goodwill throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of creation, as the earth resurrects in spring from the depths of winter, we give thanks for your magnificent creation and ask for resolve to care for it lovingly so that future generations may enjoy its bounty. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. As we observe Earth Day this week, we pray for the earth and its people. Help us to cherish the riches of your creation, appreciate the diversity of your people, and work for the cessation of turmoil and violence among the nations. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Healing God, when we doubt, increase our faith. When we despair, give us hope. And show us how to love unconditionally so that we may extend your loving compassion to those who need it the most. Comfort those who are weary and afflicted. Shelter the homeless. Give refugees a land to call home. Care for the children who are alone and afraid. And hear the cries of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We ask especially for healing for those suffering from COVID or other illnesses. Comfort families who mourn the loss of a loved one. And protect those who protect us. We ask that you grant the needs of those we now name in the silence of our hearts. And we ask that you sustain all these and give them your peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. In thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in the faith, inspired with their lives, and bring us with them to the heavenly feast. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And like Christ offered to those in the room, the peace of Christ be with you also. Let's share that peace with others. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Today we heard about how Jesus was bodily, physically present with the disciples after the resurrection. As we seek to be the body of Christ in the world, sent out to proclaim the good news of repentance and the forgiveness of sins, we also become present to the world through our gifts of service and our financial offerings. Your contributions to the ministry of this congregation help us to embody Christ's transformative grace in the world. Thank you for your continued generosity. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness called forth beauty from chaos, brought life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.